Fate Grand Order is the highest grossing mobile game in the world right now, and it's not difficult to see why. It has a deep story and characters that exceed the quality of most other mobile games on the market right now. You have the writer from Fate Stay Night, Kino Konasu, writing the scenarios, and new content such as story chapters and new characters being released constantly. There's an active fan base both in Japan and internationally, but FGO is also creating a gacha addiction amongst the players. <laughs> We can't talk about FGO without talking about its surrounding media, but let's be more specific. I'm specifically talking about the naughty, lewd, and uh oh spaghettio content that is generated by fans, which result in more players checking out the game. Look, there isn't much the developers can do to stop people from creating Rule 34 of their characters, that's inevitable. Just look at every Bruh. new Pokemon game. There are benefits, of course, to the developers because it's basically free publicity for their game, but FGO takes a different stance towards this. I think they actually want people to create as many Rule 34 of their characters as possible. Just take a look at some of the costumes, characters, and craft essences that are present in the game. Like, come on! The doujins are writing themselves! Furthermore, by working with R18 artists as illustrators for the game, the developers can spark more artists to do their own spin of the characters or costume. The art is then spread through Twitter, Pixiv, Fantia, and other fan communities. And thus, more people are likely to check the game out after seeing this clearly attractive art. And the result? People really sacrifice certain things for this game. I don't know what it is about Fate Grand Order that makes people just wild out. We all lie to ourselves saying it's solely for the stats. But in actual reality, we see these wifeys as our own little trading cards. And we use all our gems and quartz to get that fucking swimsuit altar that I fail to get every year. ダイゴです。FGOプレイヤーです。だいたい起きてる時は触ってるみたいな感じ。ご飯食べてる時もお風呂と寝てる時以外は触ってると思うんですけどね。多分700万ぐらいは he goes, like legit, gaming gives more dopamine than cocaine. Yeah, I believe it. <laughs> Fuck you, Charles! It's not over yet! Sure, the one-time purchase is just that. One time. But that one time becomes two. Then three. Then you decide to sell your limited edition Sega Dreamcast. Then you dip into your bank accounts. Then you spend your wages for the month. Then you use a down payment that you were saving to buy your own property with. Then you dip into your college funds. Then you sell your baby to some Pakistani drug lord. At the root of this addiction is the idea of parasocial relationships, which are one-sided relationships where one person extends emotional energy, interest, time, and in this case, money. And the other party, the persona, is completely unaware of the other's existence. In the case of FGO, players participate in this by spending money to roll in the gacha and obtaining their favorite characters. And hey, in the anime community, we often joke about our anime waifus and such, unless you're like this guy who's buying way too much Kizuna Eye merch. To spend real money for just PNGs of a character in a mobile game is crazy to me. The FGO community has reinterpreted the act of spending money for a tiny chance of getting a character you want to the act of earning the affection of said character. In essence, they have personalized the odds, making your success at pulling a desired character to be representative of earning their affection. And that is where the problem lies. The thing is, I used to play FGO quite extensively back during its launch, and have felt those same desires to obtain a character you like. I remember fondly of me obtaining Skaha Shisho during a New Year's gacha event after failing to obtain her in previous limited time events. Then came a dopamine hit unlike any other. The relief and exhilaration of finally being able to add her to my team made this moment so memorable. I never spent any money on FGO during the time I spent playing, but I can see why it can be so tempting for others. The desire to not be left out when people in your friend list have obtained the newest and shiniest waifu can only be sated by spending money on the gacha and getting them for yourself. I want to make this clear, FGO is not the sole perpetrator. It is just the more successful mobile game out there. Games like Fire Emblem Heroes, Dragalia Lost, Grand Blue Fantasy, and Azura Lane 
are all guilty of contributing to this practice. However, they do so in different degrees depending on how generous the developers are with their premium currency. I think it's the combination of being an anime media mix, a multimedia franchise, creating characters which have dominated the doujinshi sphere for like half a decade, that makes the Fate franchise and by extension FGO one of the most powerful IPs in the Japanese anime and video game industry. However, I want the viewers of this video to really consider the side effects that being involved in this mobile game can have on a person. Because without a healthy reflection on your spending practices, FGO can create real gambling addictions. This video is not me telling everyone to quit FGO. If you truly enjoy it or like me have not spent any money, hey, good on you. But for everyone else, next time you open your wallet for the newest Artoria clone, have a think about the real cost of your purchase. Okay, I think that was a cheesy enough ending to this video. Make sure to follow me on Twitter and for more videos like this, drop a like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.